Hello Internet. Today's an unboxing video. What could it be? Well, if you've seen any of my pre lately, uh, my latest videos, you'll be know you'll know that I'm into uh, inverters and stuff like that. So uh, this is an inverter. It's a big one, the biggest one you can get, 15 kilowatts. Well, I know I've said that before, but this one is <laughs> apparently actually 15 kilowatts. Uh, so there isn't any of these. Uh, Unboxing videos for this brand before. This is by Sigineer or Sin Sigineer. I don't know something like that. But um, comes with these nice straps. And, and after I took those off, I noticed the reason why. There's a note here. Dear all concerned customs, this heavy cargo is vulnerable to transit damage without original packing tapes. For unboxing inspection, please do don't cut the red tapes. That would be these straps. <clears throat> they are. Uh, removable which I found pretty neat so customs can open this and then reseal it again um, your extra love and care is highly appreciated and you'll see that so customs did open this opened and resealed by customs and they this the point of this message is that tape isn't gonna cut the mustard this is this crate it was damaged by the pallet truck um, before it got here, but the, the contents are fine. I only took this uh, cover off just to do my own inspection before letting the driver leave, but I haven't done anything else, so... Um, but yeah, tape isn't gonna, gonna cut it. The reason is they have lots of layers here. So they got some very nice plywood. It's a... It's a pretty heavy duty for something that's just like a cardboard box. And uh, some styrofoam. There's the inverter, and it's bolted down to this bottom board, which is the pallet. So, again, this is about 200 pounds after uh, including the weight of the crate and everything. Um, so there's not much to that. And I'm thinking this is probably um, a cable for monitoring, uh, I guess, temperature? Hmm, okay. I'll put that there. And it just comes apart like that, just like that. So, so we got... Uh, Instruction manual. This is available online. It's a very lengthy PDF file. The main reason about for these uh, inverters, and the whole reason I was building my own inverter, is just a reminder, is for lithium-ion batteries, the Tesla batteries specifically. Uh, there's nothing really on the market that you can control yourself. At least that's what it was at the time when I started that project. Uh, and then shortly after I started that project, <laughs> that uh, that uh, transformer that I was using is still here. A transformer there. I haven't sold it yet. It's a kind of a niche market kind of thing. I'm not very many people would be interested. So I'm stuck with it for now. But anyways, after blowing that thing up so many times I got tired of it. This thing was announced uh, from Jack Rickard at EVTV. He commissioned them to update this to run on lithium-ion batteries. Uh, so after a lot of hesitation and a lot of thought I decided to save a lot of hassle and just bite the bullet, spend the money, get the inverter. It's still way cheaper than the MagnaSign or uh, those other ones that are available in Europe and North America that are <coughs> may, may or may not be programmable for lithium ion batteries. Oh, look at that. It's a, another a remote display, I guess. That's pretty cool. Cool. <coughs> what else have we got in here? Oh, very long cable. I didn't know it came with this. That's neat. I thought this would have cost extra. So that's a really long cable, so you can monitor the inverter from another building, maybe. And uh, let's see, what's this? Uh, I don't really do unboxing videos, so it's not like I have a tripod set up and proper audio equipment or anything like that. It's just some basic directions on how to install the uh, the remote display. Huh, okay. Then uh, what do we got here? Yeah, it's the same thing that's on the on their website. If you just Google uh Sigineer, where is that? Is that listed here? Yeah. Go to Sigineer.com and you'll look at in, they're called inverter chargers. Um so I guess I could hook this up to the grid which are the regular uh, 240 and charge batteries that way and they can act as a uninterruptible power supply or you can go off-grid completely with it so that's kind of the idea 
Uh, uh, let's see if I have the patience to deal with this. What's this? Oh, that's interesting. But I think it's likely just two, two of these screws per cover, since that one has two and this one has two. It's too much of a coincidence to feel that they both lost two screws. Yeah. So, yeah. Right, continuing on, I'm curious about this. So these got these breakers on here. It says 100 amps, which kind of makes sense, I guess. But I'm gonna be running this at um, on a 50 amp breaker. I know that's only about uh, it's just slightly under 10 10 kilowatt. Uh, the way I calculate it out is that this is rated at 15 kilowatt, especially. That's a good indicator with a 100 amp breaker on it, and that's an 80 amp breaker. AC output, AC input, 80 amps. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's gonna be, you're gonna be able to do 15 kilowatts if you have. This is a 48 volt model. If you have 50 volts, and the 48 volt is like kind of a lead acid term, uh, and when it's fully charged, it'll probably be over 50 volts. There we go. Get that focus there. 15 kilowatt, 48 volt. Anyways, I, I'm from my experience with dealing with Chinese inverters or really any inverter that was originally designed with lead acid. Um, it's rated. You'll get 15 kilowatts at 50 volts on the input. Now it just went dark. You can't see anything, can you? There you go. So, but these batteries that I have, their nominal voltage isn't 50 volts. It's going to go down to like 46, I think. So if you look, if I doing the, the rough math, uh, if you want to ha cover the full voltage range and you want full power continuously without damaging anything or uh, anything like that, you got to derate it a bit to, to, to work with the voltage of your batteries. So if I basically use the minimum voltage and I still want full power um, that is available at the same, so I get, I don't know, I'm, I'm really fumbling with these words, but the idea is that it's closer to about 12 kilowatts. Um, the other idea is that, that you want to run a continuous load at 80% of the capacity. So uh, something like an electric dryer or uh, a vehicle that plugs in as electric vehicles. If you have, um, say right here, a 50 amp breaker or a 100 amp breaker, you should do 80% of that if it's a continuous load. So that means 40 amps here or 80 amps here. Um, so that means I'm only going to be doing 40 amps of AC out of this, which is just under 10 kilowatts, and that's fine. So the battery should have no problems with that. The system should have no problems with that. This should do it without even blinking. Now, as far as surge current goes, that's where the advantage of these big heavy guys as well. If, if I'm running a, a central air or a shop compressor or uh, anything else that's very large like that, or um, that's pretty much all I can think of at the moment, but... Again, shouldn't have any problems with that. It can surge over that 40 or even 50 amps briefly before it pops a breaker or anything out. So the idea is that the breaker will trip before these do. So that this investment is protected uh, and should be good to go. Uh, what else can I talk about during this unboxing? I don't know. Well, I'm going to continue, and if I find out something else interesting to talk about, then I'll record it. Thanks for tuning in. Okay, this is kind of part of the unboxing. I just took the lid off. I didn't touch anything else. But I did take a really close look at what's going on in here. I was really surprised by this big empty space. I thought there'd be a, an inductor here or something like that. I think previous versions might have had that. So I will, I will see about the performance of this thing when, when it's up and running. But a few observations I wanted to make. Uh, <clears throat> I, I went inside quickly into the math. I've been very impressed by this so far because normally on, on Chinese uh, cheap equipment, the wire size will be rated in millim square meter, millimeters squared, uh, which is the uh, metric version of American wire gauge. <clears throat> so, uh, but I guess because this is actually designed for UL specification, they haven't certified a UL. That's why it's cheaper than the stuff you can get here. Uh, but it is, I think, they're wanting to sell it to OEMs who can certify themselves and resell it again. 
which I don't think I'm going to do. Um, but the point is, this first observation I made is this wire here is, uh, I don't know if you can still show up in the camera, uh, that is 10 AWG or 10 gauge. And there's two of them. Uh, so when you put two of them together, it doesn't, like 10 plus 10 doesn't equal 20. It doesn't work that way. American wire gauge is kind of, mm, well, the same thing as other eh, imperial measurement systems in that they don't make very much sense. But the point is, if you put two 10 gauge wires together, it essentially becomes a four gauge wire, uh, which is good for uh, a 70 amp breaker. And if you multiply 70 amps by 240 volts, you get about 16 kilowatts, which is more than what this thing can do, which that means this thing will shut itself off or fail before these wires burn up, which is a good sign. Uh, so that's going to this breaker here, which says 80 amps. So I'm not too worried about the ratings of these breakers. I think they're mainly meant for on-off switches. And keep in mind that they have to size these for surge ratings as well. So uh, again, I, I don't really, I'm not familiar with these styles of breakers. I'm more familiar with the standard, uh, these kind that we have here in Canada. Uh, but nonetheless, I'll, I'll still put them uh, to good use, but they're going to treat them as a redundancy since uh, when I output, I'm going to be going to a utility box. Actually, I'll be specifically going to go to this utility box, which is currently kind of hooked up to the grid, but that's going to change. This is just kind of a temporary setup. Uh, that's, so that's, that's the main observation I wanted to share while this thing was open. Uh, one of the things I was curious about, which I couldn't find, was the direction of airflow. So if I was going to make a case around this to store this outdoors, it's like, well, which way do I have it face? Which is, so anyways, cutting to the point, it might be hard to see, but there's the airflow. The airflow is going out, out these vents here. Now there's another fan, which is this kind of a disturbingly similar uh, inverter board down there to the ones that I've had a lot of bad luck with. Uh, there's another, there's a fan on that. I'm not sure which direction it goes because I can't see uh, which where, where that's going, but I'm hoping it's blowing over the heatsink and out that way. And there's other ventilation here as well. Um, but that's yeah, this empty space here is there's even studs to mount something. So I don't know if this is a, I think this is a, the newest version that they have. Um, I don't know if it's for cost cutting or performance or something, but I'm hoping I'm not missing anything important. Uh, I don't think it would be by accident either because this stuff is all hooked up properly and, and looking good. Uh, and none of that like hot glue you see on uh, a lot of um, uh, Chinese products from, from AliExpress and Alibaba. Like this is proper uh, retaining cement if you want to call that. Same thing with these marks here imply that the screws have been torched down properly and that tells you tells you if they've been backed off at all. Uh, from vibration or whatever. Uh, so yeah, bus bars coming off of the main terminal studs uh, right onto where they need to go. And uh, those MOSFETs down there. And apparently this is kind of, it is repairable. They, they do sell individual boards and components if something goes wrong. But I hope nothing ever goes wrong with this because I'm gonna have it well protected. Uh, okay, that's it, thanks.